In a time where the Jays offense has been so frustrating to watch all season long, I want to take you back to when scoring runs was never, ever the problem. The year is now 2021. Vladdy is hitting a piss missile every day, Teo and Lourdes are causing mayhem in the dugout, and no matter the score, it always seemed like the team could come back from any deficit. Oh, also, Alec Manoa was a beast. Yeah, I think we missed that. But there was someone else who was instrumental to the success of the 2021 team, and his name is Marcus Simeon. In his one year playing for the club, he suited up in every game, hit over 100 RBIs, scored over 100 runs, and had a very solid 265 average and 873 OPS. Oh yeah, he also hit the most home runs in a single season by a second baseman ever, won the Gold Glove Award, and finished third in MVP voting, only trailing Vlad and Shohei. You could even argue it was one of the best seasons in franchise history. After all, in terms of war, it already ranks as a sixth. But anyways, you get the gist, Marcus Simeon was a stud in Toronto. However, following the 2021 season, the Jays decided to let him walk, leaving behind a huge hole at second base, one that we really haven't even filled. What's up guys and welcome or welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be going over the decision to let Marcus Simeon walk and whether or not that was a massive mistake. Also, make sure to stick around to later in the video when we compare his numbers to the stats the Jays have been getting from second base. It's pretty shocking. Let's get into it. In the season following his move from the 6th to the Lone Star State, he found it difficult to get into a groove, and actually for the first 48 games of the season, he was one of the worst batters in baseball. With a sub-200 average, a terrible 524 OPS, and only one home run slugged. That's right, in the season following his record-breaking 45 home run campaign, he hit only one in his first 48 games. At this point in time, I was starting to feel relieved that we let him walk, because he seemed like a dud. But then, he took off. Following his 0 for 6 performance on June 1st, he went on to post an 820 OPS, hit 25 homers, and score 80 runs in the final 113 games of the season. Add this to his incredible defensive value, and that brings his overall production to a 5.7 war in his first season with the Rangers. For reference, that was the 16th best in the major leagues among field players. Not bad for a guy who you could say had a very down year for his standards. Now let's compare those numbers to the stats the Jays got from the second base position. And in 2021, it was manned mainly by three guys. Kevin Biggio, Santiago Espinal, and Whit Merrifield. These three put together a mediocre slash line with little power and bang average defense. But the biggest kicker of all in these stats is the cumulative war. As mentioned before, Simeon had a 5.7 war in 2021, and these three guys, well, it was less than half at just 2.25. That's a huge loss, but now let's see if it gets any better in 2023. And for Simeon this year, he's picked up right where he left off from in 2022, hot. In fact, he has been his consistent self all season long, and he currently holds a far better slash line than last year, and is on pace to beat practically all of his previous season highs. So what does this mean in terms of war? Well, he's right around the same as 2022 with 5.6. However, he's done this in 25 fewer games. Meaning, if he continues at this pace, he'll finish the year with 6.8, far better than last year, and that was still elite. Moving on, let's compare those numbers to the J stats. And in 2023, this position has been manned by mainly the same guys in Whit Merrifield, Kevin Biggio, and Santiago Espinal with Davis Schneider now emerging as yet another option. And again, this group has put together a mediocre slash line. A little better than last year, I'll give them that, but it's still a position the Jays are not getting that much production from. Now let's look at War. And as mentioned before, Marcus Simeon is having another great year with 5.6, and these guys have just 2.4. More than last season, however, when comparing it to Marcus Simeon, he's blowing their production completely out of the water. But before we go all, oh my god, we made the worst decision ever, I want to talk about the contract Simeon signed and what we can do with the money saved. Simeon signed a 5 year, $175 million deal. Not a cheap one, but not too expensive, and not one that the Jays couldn't afford. This breaks down to $26 million per year till 2026, then for the final year, it's $20 million. If the Jays had this in 2022, then their luxury tax payroll would have increased from $194 million to $220 million, just $10 million below the luxury tax threshold. Don't know what that means? Well, let me explain. The luxury tax threshold is a limit set by the MLB on the total annual sum that teams can spend on a player's salary. 
When a team exceeds the threshold, they have to pay a fine based on the amount of overage and their history of exceeding the limit. For example, a first time offender pays a 20% fine, second time pays a 30%, and beyond that, a 50% fine. So in 2022, they were fine, but beyond that is where things start to get interesting. Because even though the threshold did increase to 234 million this year, the Blue Jays did go over it. It was minimal, but add Simeon's contract to it and they go way over. So much over it that maybe Rodgers wouldn't have allowed that big of a budget. After all, they have been pretty stingy in the past. And if this is the case, then Atkins would have to free up some money. So maybe that means the Jays can't sign Kiermaier or Belt because the payroll would have been too high. And those guys have been some of the best on the team. And looking forward to 2024, the payroll is set to increase again. Sure, they have some guys coming off of it like Ryu, Chapman, Merrifield, Belt, and Kiermaier, but that also leaves behind a lot of holes that they need to fill with that money. Not to mention guys like Vlad, Bichette, Barrios, and Gosman all looking to receive more money in the coming years. So while yes, technically they would have been fine with Simeon's contract in 2022, it could have brought up some major problems in 2023 and potentially beyond. But I know you can't really overlook what this man has done in the two years since leaving the city. So let me ask you, do you think they made the right decision to let him walk? Also, if you want to check out a video I made just like this comparing Robbie Ray versus Kevin Gosman, then click on this little pop-up right here.